Hello, I'm Chris Goffey. Welcome to this handover video on your new Ford Terrier camper van. Now obviously you'll be getting comprehensive manuals on both the conversion and on the vehicle themselves from Ford and from Wellhouse and I recommend you read them carefully. However, let's just run over some of the more important points about this beautiful van. So points to remember when you're raising the roof. First of all, detach the sound deadening panel off its Velcro strip. It's there to reduce wind and road noise when you're driving along. Let it hang down. Next, remove the two safety straps, turn buckle the catch, and release the two catches, and then simply push the roof up. It'll go up on its gas assisted struts. And then push the bed up into the roof itself and you're ready. Finally, roll up the sound deadening panel and clip it in place. Points to remember when you're closing the roof, first thing to do is to unclip and unroll the sound deadening panel, let it hang down. Make sure there's a door open to release the air pressure as the roof comes down, stop the canvas billowing. Make sure all the windows are fully zipped closed before you even attempt to close the roof. Pull the bed down and make sure there's no loose bedding on it. Grip the two straps, pull the roof down to about 20 centimetres from uh, fully closed, make sure the canvas isn't trapped in the edge of the roof. Make sure the catches are clear of the canvas, pull the roof fully down, attach the hooks and then turn the buckles through 180 degrees to make sure the roof is fully clamped down. Finally, attach the safety straps. Swiveling the seats, simplicity itself. The key are these very clever locking cam plungers. Push the steering wheel forward and up, lower the fly-off handbrake lever, and use the bar to slide the seat forwards and backwards. Then swivel round, taking care to avoid any damage to the door panels. You might find it easier to do this with the door open for the first few times. Practice it and make sure you can do it easily on a dark, wet and cold night. The optional fold-down bed gives ample space for two adults. This is no children's enclosure. A good memory foam mattress and underneath it these ingenious, very compact springs the fold-down bed also comes as standard with a ladder and a children's safety net so you can put children up here if you want to. Installing the table, again, for simplicity, swing the arm out, put the tube in place and tighten it up. Table goes on the top. And screws in place. And with the table in place, you can then simply adjust the seat so that all four people have easy access to the table. It's completely convenient. Now somewhere to put the table is always a problem in so many camper vans. In this one it's neatly secured on these clips on the back shelf and that's a lot more convenient let me tell you. Now just a word of warning the front seats must be locked in position facing forward when the vehicle's in motion and the rear seat must be locked in its position if you're carrying passengers. The table has to be stored away on the rear panel when the vehicle is in motion and the passenger side table must be stored behind the passenger seat. A useful optional extra if you're often carrying children or old people. 
the electric step. The 12 volt system is controlled from this panel. Now the layout is pretty simple. A master switch there that controls all the 12 volt electrics. Test switch to see how much power is left in the leisure battery. Auxiliary is a spare switch for other optional extras. That switch controls your water pump. When the red light comes on, then the water pump's on and it, uh, the water is delivered on demand from the tap. Bottom two switches, the sink and cooker lights, and the lights at the back of the van. One for the strip lighting under the work surface, and this switch for all the down lighters in the van. You've got a socket here for your USBs, for recharging your phone or computer. Here, 12 volt socket, and here a 13 amp socket for when you're plugged into the mains on a campsite. If you've opted for the Webasto cabin heater, and from personal experience, I can say it's well worth having, a simple control here on the control panel. Simply turn it on and set it to the desired heat. So the seat bed arrangement from a quality German manufacturer fully meets Ford safety standards. Isofix attachments for baby seats, as you'd expect. Mounted in these very secure floor-mounted runners, the seat moves forward to the desired position. If you want to eat with five of you, the table in place here. If you want more space in the back, move right back to the back that gives you an enormous amount of load space in the front to do your cooking whatever you want to do and of course it folds down into a bed in which case you move it forward to the right position again now once you've decided which position you want the seat in especially if you're traveling it's important to lock it securely in position to do that simply find it in the right place operate the foot pedal and there you are it's locked. To release, press down on the pedal, pull the lever and release. When it comes to converting it into a bed at night, simplicity itself, fold down the rear portion, lift the trailing edge and pull forward. This then swivels out, pull the release lever and that folds down. You've got a nice soft comfortable mattress, putting it back of course a reverse of the same procedure. Now the vehicle is fitted with a high quality 12 volt leisure battery. It's very important to maintain that battery to ensure a full life. You should regard the leisure battery as a store of power rather than a supply of power. And that means that it does need to be charged. Now if you're gonna leave the vehicle for a very long time, the battery will obviously start to run down and then damage can result. Certainly every four weeks you need to connect the whole vehicle to mains power and then the battery charger that is built into the system here will automatically bring it up to full charge. There's a solar panel fitted to the roof and that will also help to maintain the leisure battery's charge. When you're driving there's also a split charge facility that charges the vehicle's main battery and also the leisure battery as well but you shouldn't rely on that all the time make sure you've topped up the leisure battery from time to time
Hooking up on site is pretty straightforward. Make sure your master switch is off. Sometimes people find this panel very stiff to open, but get your fingers over it. Good pull in the center. And then open the cover on the mains lead. Connect the pins up, in it goes, and you're hooked up. Back in the van and switch your master on. When it comes to disconnecting, pull down the little blue lever, out it comes, and don't forget to secure the flap. Push securely on each corner in turn, and that keeps the water out. If you're planning to travel abroad, have a look at your user manual, talk to your Ford dealer, or even talk to Wellhouse Direct about the different uh, gas systems available on the continent and the different electrical hookup systems. Fresh water, of course, very important in any camper van. You have a generous 40 litre fresh water tank in this van. It's uh, filled through this lockable tamper proof cap down here. Simply insert a hose or whatever and fill it up. There's an equivalent 40 litre grey water tank at the back. Um, how do you know if that's full? Well, if you pull the plug out of the sink and the water doesn't run away, grey water tank is full. Some sites ask you to empty your grey water over a particular grating or, or drain hole. Obviously, just drive the van, position it so the drain tap is over the grating. Let's have a look at those taps. Three water taps under this side of the vehicle. They're color coded blue for fresh water, gray for wastewater. Now, to drain the wastewater tank, simply find the tap here, turn it, discharge the gray water. Just behind the front wheel here is the drain tap for the fresh water tank. Now, normally you won't be bothered too much about that, but bear in mind in icy weather, you will need to drain the fresh water tank because obviously you can't put antifreeze in your drinking water. Open the tap, the water all drains out. Now this tap is just in front of the rear wheel here. And again, very important in icy weather that you turn it to drain the pipework, the electric pump, water pump, and the tap itself. Because if ice forms in those components, it can cause a lot of damage. When you refill with fresh water, sometimes the water won't come out of the tap immediately. It means there's air in the system and you can easily bleed it by just flicking this tap on and off a few times. The van comes with a generous six kilogram gas cylinder stored in this compartment that's enough for a, certainly an extended continental trip. There's a vent here. There's also a vent on the far side of the load space. In the event of any leakage, make sure that you don't cover that uh, vent. You'll notice there's a, a clever little porthole on the side here, and that means that you can put your hand in and turn the gas off. It's important to turn the gas off when you're traveling. It also gives you access to the cylinder even if you've packed the rear space. Changing the gas cylinder itself is pretty easy. Undo the strap, turn the gas off, undo the pigtail, pull it clear and simply lift out the cylinder. So a quick run through the domestics on the inside of the van. Generous 40 litre fridge with an ice compartment. It's also got a setting so you can leave the door slightly ajar when the fridge is off and that means no mold grows inside. Uh, the fridge operates when the engine's running and when the master switch is on. But if you want to switch the fridge off independently, obviously control inside to switch it off and control the internal temperature of the fridge. You've got a a grill, a simple on off switch, and electronic ignition. Down here, the porta potty, turn it through 90 degrees, 
just slide it out. Above here, the sink and the twin burner hob. Split covers, I quite like that because if you are cooking, you can have one of these down, it's heat proof glass, and you put your pans on top. Again, simple controls, on off, low settings, electronic ignition to both burners. Tap comes up, water pumps on, simply control it from here. Side and rear windows are equipped with these slide out curtains. They run out on runners. They're light proof, so it keeps the van dark as the sun comes up. And they also help with insulation in the winter, keeps the van nice and warm. And unlike some conversions, proper Ford factory fit side windows. Every Terrier will come with a pack of these thermo acoustic panels which fit on the driver's and passenger's side windows and on the windscreen. They're good at reflecting sunlight on the outside and they keep the van warm on the inside. They also keep out daylight. Let's see how they work. Now when you first undo the pack you'll find this little bag of suckers. And what you do is just simply insert them on the shiny side, pull them through like that. You may find a quick lick on the suckers helps them adhere. Press them on in place. There they are. And when you remove them, don't tear the fabric away because you may pull the sucker through the hole, just simply put your nail under the edge of the sucker and lift it off. As you'd expect, the electrical systems are protected by standard automotive blade fuses. There's two fuse boxes, one under the front passenger seat and the other in this locker. And this compartment also includes the trip switches which control the charger and the sockets. Fuses in the front box look after the engine and auxiliary batteries, the solar panel, the auxiliary heater and the battery charger. Those in the rear compartment look after the heater, the vehicle battery and the auxiliary battery again, the top locker lights, the rear headlining lights, the hob ignition, the water pump and the 12 volt sockets as well as the fridge. All new models of the Terrier are fitted with a fly-off handbrake. Operation quite simple. To apply the handbrake, pull the lever up and it's set and then simply push the lever down and that enables you to spin the driver's seat but the handbrake is still on and the vehicle won't roll. When you want to take the handbrake off and obviously the driver's seat will then be facing forward, pull the handbrake up, press the button and release. It's as simple as that. Now fitted as standard to all Terriers, carbon monoxide detector and a smoke alarm. Punctures are pretty rare, thank goodness, in today's motoring conditions, but if you are unfortunate enough to get one, you'll need to know how to change the wheel. First of all, make sure you know where your wheel brace is stowed. If uh, the vehicle's full of gear at the back, well, don't despair, you don't need to unload it all. Simply open the panel, insert the sharp end of the brace, and you can lower the spare wheel on its own little winch. 
The jack is conveniently located behind a panel under the driver's seat. The cabin heater is a great addition to any camper van. It makes the, the vehicle truly usable throughout the year, no matter what the weather conditions. Very simple, self-contained unit. There's a single control up here on the panel. Turn it on, little green light flashes to show that it's active and uh, sounds a bit like a, a 747 taking off as it warms up, but once it achieves operating temperature, then the fan goes down and it's just a background hum. Air intake here in the passenger footwell, important not to block that with map books or perhaps a handbag. The outlet here under the passenger seat, a swiveling nozzle, you can direct the heat either up or down depending on where you want it. Again, don't cover it, don't place things up against it because the air can get quite hot. If you've got any concerns at all, you want to know more about it, there's lots of information in your pack. Now, before you make the decision to purchase a Ford Terrier, obviously, you'll have lots of questions. Wellhouse has anticipated that by publishing all the FAQs on their website. And I do urge you to go through them all because they will answer an awful lot of the points that you may have in mind. Better still, do what I do and print them out and go through them. The website will also tell you which four dealers have a camper van in stock. So I do urge you to go to the Ford dealer as close to you as possible. Now, obviously, not all Ford dealers are going to stock a camper van. So again, go onto the Wellhouse website, find out which dealers are participating. On price and service, all the Ford dealers will be the same. Uh, so I do urge you to go to the Ford dealer closest to you because Ford dealers can offer you the finance packages that can be specially tailored to your needs. Now, I think it's important to emphasize that Wellhouse don't use the basic transit for their conversion. When they started the Terrio, they used the new Tornio trend, but it's been so successful and they've made so many of them that they've teamed up with Ford's development engineers to come up with their very own special base vehicle. It incorporates a lot of extras which are in the vehicle as standard. There's three different models to choose from and again look at the Wellhouse website for full details of the specifications. For 2015 Wellhouse are working on a long wheelbase version of the camper van and that will incorporate a flushing cassette toilet. And again, in 2015, it happens to be the 50th anniversary of the Transit van. And to coincide with that, Wellhouse are producing an anniversary edition. Now, for your total peace of mind, it's nice to know that all 2015 model Terriers come with full type approval, the National Caravan Council approval, the ISO 9001 standards, and of course, Ford guarantee the vehicle for three years and Wellhouse guarantee the conversion for three years as well. It's things you really need to know before you buy a camper van. Now you don't need me to tell you that there's a certain well-known German manufacturer who makes a competitor to this vehicle for a lot more money. But what are just some of the points you should consider when choosing between the two? Just one point. This vehicle has a fly-off handbrake. You lower it to swivel the front seats round. The German competitor, you have to leave it in gear and put the handbrake down in order to swivel the seats. So if you forget to put it in gear and you're on a slope, it could be a problem. And another point, our vehicle has the sliding door, as you'd expect, on this side. The German vehicle has the sliding door on the other side, and that means your passengers are jumping out potentially into the path of oncoming vehicles. It's a valid safety issue. If you like toast and grilled bacon, you can put a grill in this vehicle, something you can't do on the German opposition. This vehicle has a porta potty with a proper cupboard for storing it, something you don't get on the German equivalent. And that's a very important point for those of us of my age group who tend to need the loo more often. The Wellhouse camper seats five people, each with their proper seat belt. The 
the German only four. There's a long list of optional extras. You can tailor the vehicle to your own specification. The Germans tend to give you a brochure and take it or leave it. And if you are thinking about choosing between the two, make sure you drive the Wellhouse Terrier because it will dispel any preconceptions you might have about driving a van. It's just like a saloon car. When you're spending a lot of money, obviously residual values are very important. And some people will tell you that one manufacturer has much better RVs than another. Bear this in mind, though. Over the years, Wellhouse has established excellent resale values across a wide range of the models they've converted. And just one final point, you could end up spending £10,000 more on something that doesn't give you as much as this. The Wellhouse manufacturing facility here in West Yorkshire, very much not a closed shop because Wellhouse positively encouraged customers to come and see the work that's being done. So if you're in the market for a Terrier, get your Ford dealer to arrange a visit here and you can see how your van is going to be built. The cabin heater is a great addition to any camper van. It makes the, the vehicle truly usable throughout the year, no matter what the weather conditions. Very simple, self-contained unit. There's a single control up here on the panel. Turn it on, little green light flashes to show that it's active. And uh, sounds a bit like a, a 747 taking off as it warms up, but once it achieves operating temperature, then the fan goes down and it's just a background hum. Air intake here in the passenger footwell, important not to block that with map books or perhaps a handbag. The outlet here under the passenger seat, a swiveling nozzle, you can direct the heat either up or down depending on where you want it. Again, don't cover it, don't place things up against it because the air can get quite hot. If you've got any concerns at all, you want to know more about it, there's lots of information in your pack.